guys, welcome back. If you're new here, hello, my name is Brittany, and in today's video, I'm going to do a foundation wear test on the new ColourPop No Filter Foundation. Love the packaging on this. I was really surprised that it was a glass bottle and it had a pump. I was just like, yes, bitch. So really excited to try this, but I also did pick up the No Filter Setting Powder. I will be using this on half of my face, and then I'm going to put the Cody Airspun on the other half of my face because I know that I love this powder. I've used it on so many people. I've used it on myself a gazillion times. So I wanted to compare it to the ColourPop one because the prices are relatively similar, except this one is a lot easier to get in person. So I feel like these will be two comparative products. So I wanted to compare those. But overall, I wanna see how this foundation wears with a powder that I already love and a new powder. So we're going to be seeing all that sort of shit on my face today. So if you guys like foundation wear tests, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any other foundations that you guys wanna see wear tests on, I did just get the Dior Face and Body Foundation. Any other ones that you guys want to see, leave them in the comments down below and let's just jump right in and let's do this! Okay, so before we get into the foundation demo, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the product itself. I'm not going to go crazy in depth like I usually do because I feel like there's so many videos already on this. So we'll just go with the basics. So this foundation line has 42 shades, which is insane, especially for this being ColourPop's first foundation launch. The only thing that I didn't really love about the range was it seems like a lot of them are really like yellow toned. That's the only thing that I would change about it, but 42 shades right from the get-go is amazing. And the fact that this is in a glass bottle with a pump, it doesn't come with a lid, which is something that kind of annoys me personally, but for $12, I'm not going to complain about it. And then for the no filter setting powder, I picked up the shade translucent. There were two other ones. There was a banana shade and like a pinky shade, but I love loose setting powders and this is what the packaging looks like. I really like the packaging. Granted, you don't get nearly as much product as you do in like the Cody Airspun, like <laughs> look at the size difference there. But you get 8.5 grams, so you get 0.3 fluid ounces. In the Airspun, you get 2.3 ounces, so you get a lot more product. This is like $7 at the drugstore. The only thing that I don't like about the Airspun is the scent of it, which I haven't seen if this has a scent yet, but I feel like for the amount of product, this is $9. I feel like for the price, it's still not bad, but you can get like Cody Airspun for cheaper. You can get the RCMA No Color Powder for cheaper as well. You get like three ounces of product for like 12 bucks. So you are getting a lot less product, but the price is still on point in my opinion. So let's see if this has a scent or anything like that. And as I'm opening it, you can see like there's powder going everywhere. I did take this sticker off the top, but it is like all over the place. So I don't feel like it does a really great job at like holding the product under there. It's got these little holes right here, but it does not have a scent at all, so that's really good. I love when powders don't have scents on them, personally, because I notice like when I do freelance, this, some people either love or hate the smell. A lot of people love the smell of it. It smells like, to me, grandma. Let's just move right into the demo. We covered the price, we covered how much product you get. Those are overall the basics that matter to me, but I feel like overall the product pricing is on point, which ColourPop always is. The only thing I don't like about ColourPop is I feel like their website is really overwhelming, but one thing I do really like about how they did the foundations is you could go on the website and you can like pick what shade range you are. Like you could pick like I'm light skin tone and I have neutral undertones and it gives you these specific colors. So I personally picked the shade 100, which I feel like is going to not exactly match me correctly, but we're going to try to make it work anyways. But that was one thing I really did like. So 100 was I think the like the most neutral of them all, which is why I picked this one but we'll see how it performs on the skin. I'm going to be using a Sonia Kashuk makeup sponge to apply this and let's just dive right in. The one thing that I did see recently is it does stop. So if you turn this, it will start pumping. And then if you turn it back, it does not pump. So that's nice so you can travel with it and stuff like that. So do really like that. And then let's get these pumps out. I did quite a bit more. So I wanted you guys to see the consistency of it. So you can see it's really watery. So I'm not really expecting it to be a really full coverage foundation, but with ColourPop, you never fucking know because their concealer is bomb. It's one of my favorite concealers I've ever used. So looking at this, just by pumping it out, it seems like it does change in color. Like it seems like it's already darker than the original pump that I pumped out. And that was super quick too. But that's one thing I did notice about the um, concealer as well is it does dry down darker. So maybe that's another reason why I decided to get the shade 100 because that was one thing that I knew about the concealer, so I figured the foundation would do it as well. But this is really nice coverage. Like, I would say that's like medium coverage and it's super thin, so it's like, it doesn't even feel like anything's on your skin right now. But that was, wow. 
I'm impressed with that coverage, especially for how liquidy it looks like it is. All right, let's 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 get down with this. Oh my god, this does look really dewy on my skin, which I have all my skincare on underneath, so that's to be expected to look more dewy, but this is definitely looking dewy. Like, look at that glow that it gives. Holy shit. All right, let's see how it looks on the forehead. Because I personally don't like to look extremely dewy because I do have an oily t-zone and I don't want to look like a slick sausage all day and when I wear foundations I like to wear them like I do them in the morning like right now it's afternoon it's 11 54 right now so I do them usually in the morning and I want it to last all day I'm just going to just take my sponge and just kind of go in from here I feel like the I love how my skin looks though like I love how it's so like it blends out so easily on your skin and it has a lot more coverage than I was expecting it to. And then I always go over my eyes too. I'm overall really happy with this so far. I just hope when I put the powder on, it doesn't look as luminous. Like, I'm looking luminous as fuck right now. So, that's not something I personally love, but I know a lot of people do. Like, if you have drier skin, you will probably like that. But me, personally, this is a little bit too luminous. So, hopefully when I put the powder on, it'll kind of dull it down a little bit. And I'm just going to take what's left over and blend it down my neck. This ended up matching a lot better than I was expecting it to, which that's nice because I was expecting it to pull really yellow on me and even like applying it to your hand, it does look a lot more like orangey yellow, but on the skin it doesn't look like that unless my skin is looking pff, orangey and yellow. I'm actually going to put some on this little blemish I have down here too. Probably won't cover it completely, but this is just something I like to do. Like if I have a lower cut shirt on, I like to blend it down my chest. That way everything just kind of blends all together. Check that out. I feel like the coverage on this is exceptionally good. Like, I was not expecting it to be that good of coverage. And it makes your skin, it looks really skin-like. It doesn't look like it sits on top of the skin. So I'm just going to take a little bit more. Granted, I did not need to use all that. Like, just one pump. You can see how runny it is. I'm just going to do this to see if it is buildable. Because I do like to usually have more coverage in, like, the center of my face. So I'm just going to apply that all right here and then just blend it out really quick. Because this is where my foundation tends to break up is right on the center of my face and on my chin. So we're going to apply just a little bit more there. It does build really well, still looks really skin-like, like it layers really nicely. Oh shit, color pop! You might have done that. And then I want to put a little bit more. I always get pimples right here, like right in my contour line. Wow, I'm like amazed at that coverage right now. Like this to me looks like it would be like a high-end foundation. Just because of how it blends out, it looks so flattering on the skin. I'm really excited to see how this wears. I just hope it lasts a while. I don't think it claims to be long wearing or anything like that, but anytime like just by looking at how foundations do claims now, I'm just like, I don't even pay attention to claims anymore. Like, I watch videos like this where I'm like, let me see that shit in action, okay? So I'm just adding a little bit more over here. Blends really nicely. It doesn't feel like it dries down quickly either, so I feel like you could, like, dot all over your face and blend out. You don't have to, like, work in sections. Like, I just got into the habit of working in sections, like, applying it and then blending it out just because I've had so many foundations that dry down quickly but I don't feel like this one does at all. All right, so I think that's good for the foundation. So overall, first impression of just applying the foundation, I think it looks really luminous, which is something I don't typically love, but I feel like I could get away with it in the summertime. I feel like the coverage is fantastic. So my overall first impression of this is, it, I think it's beautiful. I think it layers really nicely. It's really flattering on my textured skin. And that's one thing I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video, which I usually do right off the get-go. That way you don't get watching it and are like, oh, our skin is totally different. I do have light to medium skin, which now I have more medium skin with neutral undertones. And I do have combination skin. So I am going to be oily in the center of my face and then drier on the outer perimeter but being in the summertime I'm usually like more normal. I usually get oily still in the center of my face but outside is more normal instead of dry. So I feel like overall it looks beautiful right off the get-go. I'm just really hoping that the luminosity kind of tones down with the setting powder aspect on top of it. So the next thing I'm going to do is just apply my concealer and then I will get into the setting powder aspect. So I'm going to use the shade Light 20 from the ColourPop concealer. When you first apply this it looks way too light for my skin right now but it does dry down darker so when it dries down this is like my perfect 
shade so don't be alarmed like whoa that's way too light when it dries down it looks a hell of a lot better so I've been trying to do my concealer not as dramatic as a lot of other beauty influencers are lately so I don't really do the big triangles anymore I watched one of Wayne Goss's videos and he really explained it how when you do those big triangles it's really hard to like disperse your product like it has nowhere to go type of deal if you're interested in that video I will leave it in the description box if you guys want to see it just let me know I've just been really focusing on applying most of the product here and then blending it out in that triangle shape so I feel like this has really been a lot more flattering on my under eyes as well like I do have textured under eyes and I feel like this has made my under eyes not look as heavy and cakey and it's still like especially with this coverage that this concealer has it still gives you really nice coverage because this is like compatible coverage with Tarte Shape Tape even though I think this looks better than Tarte Shape Tape in my personal opinion so I'm just going to blend it out really quick and you guys can see how much darker it looks like as it just dries down. So like I said, this is like my perfect concealer shade right now and then I do like to go over my lids as well. And then I do feel like the foundation does the exact same thing as the concealer does as far as when it dries down, it dries down darker. So just be mindful of that. I would say if you think you know the right shade, go a shade lighter and I feel like that will be your ideal shade because I did think that the color 100 was going to be too light but it looks it looks perfect on me. All right, so I'm just making sure everything's all blended out and then I'm going to go in with my setting powder. So on the right side is where I'm going to do the ColourPop powder. So I'm just going to dip in. This does look really nicely milled and I also forgot to add primer today. So <laughs> where you don't have any primer on underneath and I know not everybody uses primer so that kind of works out. So I'm just going to set my entire right side with this powder looking closer at it it makes my pores look really nice so looking at it now that my face is done it does give you a lightening effect at first when I applied it I didn't really see that until like now that my entire face is done but it doesn't really I don't know it's like it lightens it but it gives me more coverage so I do like that personally I do feel like now that I'm looking at my neck I do feel like it's still darkening a little bit so just be mindful of that and then let me go on the other side and then this is where I'm going to use the Cody Airspun powder and then the reason that I set my entire face with powder is just because I do have an oilier t-zone and it just overall I don't know I feel like it makes my makeup last so much better like, I don't know how these people don't set their faces with powder. Like, I could not. So, looking at this side, they are going to look different. Like, you're going to see that this doesn't give the coverage. I don't think that the ColourPop one does. I think the ColourPop gives a more nice, more flawless coverage. So, we actually might be putting some ColourPop on top because I do have to go out and do stuff today. So yeah, you can see that this is more translucent, I think, than the ColourPop one. But I actually like how this side looks. Let me pull this in closer. I feel like I put too much powder on this side though, because right in this area here, it is looking a little bit cakey. So now I'm done setting my face with the two powders. I just want to pull this in closer to see how it looks. I feel like, honestly, the Cody Airspun side looks better in my opinion. I think looking in the camera, the ColourPop side does, but when I look really close at the ColourPop one, I'll pull you guys in close as well. I, it does look a little bit heavier and a little bit more cakey. So I feel like if you are to use this, you shouldn't use as much as I did. Like, maybe do like a really light dusting, but I feel like overall, like my under eye looks a lot nicer on the Cody Airspun side. And it doesn't look as heavy. I don't know. I think it looks a lot more natural on this side than the ColourPop one. But since the colors are so different on both sides of my face, I do want to top off this side of my face with that ColourPop powder. But that's sometimes what happens when you're trying out new products. Like you try to do things different and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So ColourPop one definitely has more coverage than the Airspun does. If you're looking for a little bit more coverage, I personally don't feel like I really needed more coverage with that foundation. So that's just overall my first impression of it. So I think this is good. I don't want to add too much because I don't want it to get too heavy. So let me look at this. Putting that on top of the airspun, I don't feel like it made it look any heavier or anything like that. I feel like I could have maybe put a little bit too much on this side, but it really wasn't much more than what I would typically put on. You know what I mean? So I feel like 
Ultimately, the airspun looked better in my opinion, but I do like the fact that this did give more coverage. So some people look for that, some people don't. But ultimately, I feel like for $9, this is not bad at all, at least so far. So I'm going to just finish up my makeup. I will check in with you guys after I'm done with everything, let you guys know how everything applies on top of it and just overall my first impression of it. And then we will get into the wear test. So give me a few minutes and I will be right back. All right, you guys, this is going to be my makeup completely done. It is now 1.14. Took me a little bit longer to get ready as usual. So it's going to be probably a shorter wear test, but I'm going to try to get at least eight hours. So this is what everything looks like right now. I'll pull you guys in closer so you guys can get a really good look at what this area looks like, the area that I said was getting a little bit cakey. I think I could have gone like a hair darker. Like I'm looking a little bit lighter now that everything's done than the rest of my body, but it's okay. I can work with that. I feel like overall the setting powder is what really lightened everything up. So I feel like if I were to have used a different loose powder, it probably wouldn't look as light right now. So let me put you guys in closer so you guys can get an up close and personal look at what my skin looks like. Excuse all the fallout underneath my eyes too. It got really messy today. <laughs> but just so you guys can see, like I do have texture, I do have large pores, and I feel like overall my skin looks a lot nicer than it usually does. I do have usually a lot of texture on my forehead. I really feel like both of these products help really hide it. I don't feel like you could really notice it as much, but you can see it is still there. But this was the area that I was mostly concerned about when I first applied it, but it doesn't look as bad now. And I feel like once I spray my face, it really won't look as bad either. So actually I'll do that right now so you guys can see what it looks like. I'm using the Unique Touch Behold setting spray. I ran out of my Urban Decay All Nighter. So this is the one that I'm using for now drenching my face. All right, so everything's pretty dried down now and I think it looks really beautiful. I feel like it doesn't look as cakey in this area now since spraying my face. I got so much fallout from those eyeshadows though, like it's all over my face and I should have set like either my face with powder before doing that or I should have just did my eyes first, but I wasn't really sure what I was doing today. If you're wondering what's on my eyes, it's the LMR palette. This is what we got in BoxyCharm. Beautiful palette, beautiful pigment, and it looks, I don't know, I just love it. I really like how everything's looking. My nose is breaking up just a hair. We'll keep an eye on that, but I feel like everything else looks pretty good. It looks really skin-like, really buildable. I'm really feeling it. So I will check back in with you guys in a few hours, and we'll keep an eye on this is the area that I'm kind of worried about right here. Right in this area here, because I did put a lot more foundation on my nose, because this is where I typically get my makeup breaking up. So I will keep an eye on that. Pulling you back out like this though, I think it really looks beautiful. I think it looks beautiful in the viewfinder. I think it looks beautiful in person. I'm just going to be curious to keep an eye on my nose area, but other than that, I am really happy with it so far. So I will check back in with you guys in a couple hours. Okay, let's try it again. How's my foundation look, love? Furry. Furry. Why do I look furry? In the sun you look furry. Okay, well I think it looks good. I'm so mad. We were just did this whole thing and I wasn't recording. I, yes. You're furry. furry. So in the sunlight, I look furry. We just ate and it broke up right here. Would not blot at all, but I still think it looks good. Like, how does it look in this light though? Good. It looks good. It like looks your favorite good. foundation I've ever worn? No. Okay. You won't know what your favorite one is. Yeah. Well, I don't like the shiny forehead and the shiny. So I'm shiny too. Yeah. Where am I shiny? Like right here. Forehead shiny. Yeah. Where else? The camera don't help. I know. I look. I look. I think I look shinier in the camera than I do yes. in person. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. Okay. But you got like a plastic, plastic. Look I look plastic and furry. Okay. In the sunlight, you look furry. You, know, okay. you see your hair on your face. Okay. Well, that is the 440 check-in. Right, guys, I'm back for check-in number two. I think it's 8:50 right now and i just wanted to show you guys what we're looking like i'm still like in the car running ragged so this will have to do i'll do a final check-in at the end of the night but this is what the foundation is looking like i think it still looks pretty good it is looking a lot more luminous i think now than it was earlier especially like in my nose area right here but other than that i think it actually still looks pretty good it hasn't broken up any more on my chin than earlier I'm trying to get like good lighting, but it's it's not really working out for me. So I feel like ultimately this foundation I think looks really good. It reminds me a lot of the um, Lancome Skin Tint, but I feel like 
this has a little bit more coverage than that one does. I don't know. I'm really liking it. I think my texture is starting to show a little bit more too. I'll be able to look closer at it later when I get home and I can actually put my mirror in my face. But this is just what it's looking like. I think my powders are still on. It is looking a little bit heavy in my under eyes as well. But my eye makeup just looks horrendous right now but ultimately i still really like this foundation i think it still looks really nice and in person i think it looks more luminous than it does on the camera right now this is just from my phone because i forgot my camera today so this is what we're looking like i'll do a final check in in a few hours so again it's 8 50 right now so it's been on my skin for let's see i did my like final like when i was done with my makeup at like 1 15 so we'll say this has been like eight hours since I've actually put the foundation on my skin. So I don't know. I feel like it looks really nice. So I'm liking it so far. So I'll check back in in a couple hours. All right, you guys, it is now 1039, as you can see. So I've had this on my skin for about, I'm going to say when I put my foundation, it was about 12 o'clock. So this is about 10 and a half hours of wear. And we are looking a hot ass mess at this point. So I'm going to pull you guys in closer, but I'm going to just tell you right off the bat my issues that I'm having with this foundation. And on my nose, it is so broken up, it's not even funny. And on my chin area where I was talking about earlier, it is still broken up there. And I feel like it's getting really cakey in my nose area, which is really common for me. Uh, it's, it's just not looking cute at this point. But I feel like it did last a really good amount of time. I feel like with my last check-in, it still looked decent. And then within this last like few hours, it's really started to break up on my nose. But I feel like my forehead still looks really nice. It doesn't really look really textured. I think my texture does show a little bit more. But now that I'm looking at like my hairline up here, it's definitely <laughs> breaking apart up there as well. So I feel like this will be almost like a really good mixing foundation, like mixing this with other foundations. Like I feel like ideally I would mix this with like my L'Oreal Pro Matte Infallible or something like that. Something that you'd want to add a little bit more dewiness to. But let me pull you guys in closer and you guys will see how much of a fucking mess this looks like. <laughs> okay, so let's ignore the fact that my eye makeup is all over my face. We're just gonna actually take these off right now because that's gonna feel amazeballs. So let's focus on the foundation at this point. So right up here is where I was talking about how you could see how it's really breaking apart up here. Don't mind this little scar. I crushed my head the other day off of one of those shelves back there. Crushed it so hard. So don't mind that. I do notice it breaking apart a lot right here, but this is the main area of concern like I look like Rudolph right now because it broke up so much on my nose this is probably the most like broken up of foundations has ever looked on my nose and it doesn't really break up in the nose like in the creases right here but it does almost like foundation almost starts to gather there and I feel like the powder is really like not making it look its best I do not feel like this is transfer proof or anything like that if anything I feel like it transfers pretty easily so that could be the powder, it could be both. So that's just one thing I did notice. Like when I changed my shirt, I felt like my foundation kind of moved a little bit. So that's just one thing to be cautious of. And I feel like the longer that I wore it, my texture started to be a lot more predominant. But overall for a $12 foundation, I think this looks pretty good. I think it's good for like eight hours. Eight hours I think is, is a fair amount of time to wear this. As far as I know, it doesn't claim to be an all day foundation anyway. So I feel like if you're looking for a really natural looking, really good coverage foundation, this would be a really good one to try. And overall, I thought my skin looked really good and my husband really liked the way that it looked on my skin as well. Every time that he says a foundation looks good, I'm like, that's a good ass foundation. I'm gonna keep using that because he always notices. And then as soon as I stepped in the light today, he's like, your face kind of looks fuzzy. And it was because I have like my peach fuzz. But I overall feel like this looked really good on my skin. I feel like it performed decent. It's not the best that a foundation has ever performed on my skin, especially in this area right here. But again, I also feel like this is going to be a really good mixing in foundation because it does have really nice coverage so overall i'm really impressed with this foundation i would suggest to wear it for like eight hours maybe like a six to eight hour foundation but if you're looking for something that's like all day type of foundation i would probably not reach for this one i would reach for my physician's formula healthy foundation because that's like my ride or die foundation right now so that's gonna be it for today's video i did not do a flash test i totally forgot to do that today so epic fail on my part so I don't know if the powder flashes back or anything like that yet and another thing I wanted to mention is typically when I blot with foundations I just take like a paper towel and I just push it on my skin and that's it 
I would not recommend doing that with this foundation because it does pick up a lot of foundation. Like when I did this right here when I had the lipstick, like usually I could just like dab it and then it's fine and the lipstick will come off. But the entire like chin area came off when I did that today. So I feel like it is not transfer proof at all. I feel like it transfers really easily. So I would be really careful when wearing this foundation. Like especially if you're hugging somebody with a white shirt on or something like that. So just be mindful of that. And I feel like I don't really know why this came off so much on the tip of my nose. Because I don't remember like grabbing my nose or anything. So that's just one thing I'm kind of like how did that happen because I don't remember like doing anything with my nose for it to break up this much like if for a normal foundation to break up this much I would have to like be literally like itching my nose hardcore and stuff like that so that's the only thing I'm really concerned about with this foundation but I feel like how I would use this in the future would be focus like a matte foundation on the center of my face and then use the ColourPop one on the outer perimeters because I feel like out here it looks really nice but then again I'm kind of like okay well look at this section right here this does not look the best by any means but i will be curious to try this with other loose powders and stuff like that make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you guys want to hear more about these products because i always mention them in other videos or in the description box of other videos so make sure you guys do that and if you guys like these types of videos make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button and i hope to see you guys in my next one Peace.